Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Yogaha Karmasu Kaushalam Hello friends, this is Dr. Neelam Panchal from Gujarat University and I welcome you all in this session on Forms of Business Organization. Friends, do you know how to operate a business? Are you aware how your business would be structured? For getting all these answers to the questions, you need to know the forms of organization. So, this session would focus upon various forms of business organization. A single individual may own the business or a number of individuals may come together to own the business jointly. So, based upon ownership, we have different forms of business organization like proprietary concern, a partnership firm or a joint stock company, cooperative society, joint Hindu family business and so on. In this session, you will learn about the various forms of business organization, their characteristics, merits, limitations, suitability and the steps involved in their formation. Let me explain you the objectives of this session. The objectives of the sessions are to explain you the concept and meaning of different forms of business organization. To analyze the meaning and characteristics of different forms of business organization, especially social proprietorship and partnership. To identify the merits of social proprietorship and partnership. To explain you the limitations of sole proprietorship and partnership. And to explain the steps in the formation of these business organizations. Friends, let's start with business organization. If you observe business activities carefully, you will realize that whatever business activity one may take up, he has to bring together various resources like men, money, materials, machines, technology and so on to carry out the business activity successfully. Not only that, these resources are to be put into action in a systematic manner to achieve the objectives of business. Let us take the example of a rice meal. First, the owner will have to acquire a land, construct a building, buy machines and install them, employ labor to work, buy paddy and then process the paddy to produce rice that will be sold to the customers. Thus, to produce rice from paddy, you need to assemble all resources like the building, land, machinery, labor, so on and so forth. And putting all these resources together in action in a systematic way, then only it becomes possible to produce rice and sell it to the customers and ultimately to earn the profit. Whatever business activities that we are trying to carry, the ultimate goal is to earn the profit. Profit maximization and wealth maximization are one of the very, very important goals for any business enterprises. Friends, it is required to bring together all the resources starting with the finance to the man, machine, labor and all the resources in a systematic way so that you can coordinate and control these activities in a proper way and this all arrangement is called a business organization. So, once you try to look into for establishing your own enterprise, the idea coming to your mind to that screening of the idea 
developing of the alternatives looking into which are the various forms and looking into how would you try to start an idea how would you structure it and how would you start a business you need to understand various forms of business organization friends have you ever thought who brings the required capital who takes the responsibility of arranging other resources puts them into action and coordinates and controls the activities to earn the desired profits if you look around you would found that a small grocery shop is owned and run by a single individual who perform all these activities but in a big businesses it may not be possible for a single person to perform all these activities so in such cases two or more persons join hands to finance and manage the business properly and share its profit as per their agreement thus business organizations may be owned and managed by a single individual or group of individuals who may form a partnership firm or a joint stock company such arrangement of ownership and management is termed as forms of business organization a business organization usually takes the different forms in india which includes sole proprietorship partnership joint hindu family cooperative society joint stock company and so on friends now let us learn one after the other with detail exact nature of these forms of business organization so we would take up some of the organization here which includes sole proprietorship and partnership the other forms of the organization would be taken up in a different session so let's start with a sole proprietorship the term sole means single and proprietorship means ownership so only one person is the owner of the business organization this means that a form of business organization in which a single individual owns and manages the business takes the profits and bears the losses is known as sole proprietorship form of business organization friends you must have seen many more such business organizations in and around your locality could you now make a list of such concerns engaged in different type of businesses let's try to understand sole proprietorship definition j l hanson defined sole proprietorship as a type of business unit where one person is solely responsible for providing the capital bearing the risk of the enterprise and management of the business so ultimately what happens in a sole proprietorship is for example if i start a business i would screen out my idea i would start with my capital i would bring all the sources man machine labor whatever is the requirement i would plan the activity i would start the show i would run the operation i would look into the profits and losses to my organization and if there is a profit everything will go to me if there is a losses i am the only one who would have to bear the losses so ultimately as the term defines sole proprietorship that means solely an individual is responsible for all the activities of a business now let's try to understand characteristics or features of sole proprietorship form of business organization so ultimately as we said the sole proprietorship form of business organization has a single owner who himself or herself start the business by bringing together all the resources secondly the owner himself or herself manages the business as per his or her own skill and intelligence there is no separation of ownership and management as is the case with the company form of business organization in company what happens is the owner is different from the company but in the sole proprietorship everything goes with an owner 
Next is the formation and operation of a sole proprietorship form of business organization does not involve any legal formalities until and unless it is converted into different form. So, we can say that its formation is quite easy and simple. Say for example, tomorrow I have in mind that I want to start some business. So, I can bring out all the resources, I can finish some small formalities depending upon the type of the business and then simply I can start the business. So, the business unit does not have an entity separate from the owner here in this form. The businessman and the business enterprise are one and the same. So, if I start the business and I will sell it is my business and the businessman as a businessman I would be responsible for everything that happens in my business unit. So, the sole proprietor enjoys the profit alone. At the same time, the entire loss is also borne by him. So, if there is profit, then everything goes to him. If there is loss, then also he will have to bear it. No other person is there to share the profits and losses of the business. He alone bears the risks and rips the profits. Another thing is unlimited liability. Friends, the liability of the sole proprietor is unlimited. You cannot say that this is not my cup of tea. Once you have started the business, everything is yours. In case of loss of his business assets are not enough to pay the business liabilities, his personal property can also be utilized to pay off the liabilities of the business. The controlling power of the sole proprietorship business always remains with the owner. He or she runs the business as per his or her own will. That means, I as a business person need not to ask to anybody what to do, how to do, so on and so forth. Ultimately, it's my business, my secrecy, my ownership and my control. And that is what the beauty of the sole proprietorship. Now, let's understand the merits of sole proprietorship. It's very easy and simple to form a sole proprietorship form or business organization. No other legal formalities are required to be observed. But on the other hand, the business can be wind up anytime if the proprietor so decides. Nobody interferes in the affairs of the sole proprietorship organization. But so he or she can take the quick decisions on various issues related to the business and accordingly prompt action can be taken. On the other hand, if you look into what happens is, if there is any advice that is needed, then you have no one because ultimately it is your responsibility. No doubt entire profit is going to you, but on the other hand, the losses are also to be borne by you. So, that is also one of the disadvantages to the sole proprietorship. This motives of the sole proprietorship to work hard and run the business efficiently is also one of the very, very important thing. Friends, sometimes it's very easy to effect the changes as per the requirements of the business. Many a times, I as a business person need not to ask anybody. I am the sole owner. I can decide, I can act upon depending upon the changes that is happening. That changes may be the changes in the government policy, that may be changes in the market conditions, changing in the competition, changing in the business cycle, whatever it is, ultimately it is my business, my cup of tea, whether I can do it or not, ultimately everything goes to me. In addition, the expansion or curtailment of business activities does not require many formalities as in the case of other forms of business organization. The business secrets are known only to the proprietor. He is not required to disclose any information to others unless and until he himself so decides. He is also not bound to publish his business accounts, not necessary at all to show off your accounts to anybody. The proprietor himself handles everything related to the business. It's very easy to maintain a good personal contact with the customers and employees. 
and by knowing the likes dislikes and test of the customers the proprietor can adjust his operations accordingly so friends the proprietor himself handles everything related to the business it's very easy to maintain good personal contact with the customers and employees you better know about your business and your customers by knowing the likes dislikes and test of the customers the proprietor can adjust his operations accordingly so after knowing the various merits of the sole proprietorship form of business organization let us now discuss the limitations of sole proprietorship form of business organization friends the resources of sole proprietor are always limited being the single owner it's not always possible to arrange sufficient funds from his own sources and so borrowing funds from friends relatives from banks and the other sources has its own implications so the sole proprietorship has a limited capacity to raise funds for his business secondly the continuity of the business is linked with the life of the proprietor illness death or insolvency of the proprietor can lead to closure of the business thus the continuity of the business is uncertain you have already learned that there is no separate entity of the business from its owner and so in the eyes of law the proprietor and the business are one and the same so personal properties of the owner can also be used to meet the business obligation and debts since the resources and the managerial ability is limited sole proprietorship form of business organization is not suitable for the large scale businesses why because at the large scale business the scale is wider the scope is wider the activities are wider the resource requirement are wider so one man cannot manage everything a sole proprietorship form of business organization always suffers from lack of managerial expertise a single person may not be an expert in all the fields like purchasing selling financing marketing hr so on and so forth again because of the limited financial resources and size of the business it is also not possible to engage the professional managers in sole proprietorship form of business organization so somewhere or the other way it may be considered suitable for the production of the goods and services which involve manual skills for example handicrafts filigree jewelry work tailoring haircutting so on and so forth so wherever these type of activities are there wherever there is a small investment is necessary i think the sole proprietorship form is more feasible now let's try to understand another form of business organization which is partnership let's understand what is partnership as the name suggests partnership is an association of two or more persons who pool their financial and managerial resources and agree to carry on a business and share its profit the persons who form a partnership are individually known as partners and collectively a firm or partnership firm let's assume that there are two people called soham and there is another person called jimit so soham is joining hands with a jimit to start a big grocery shop partnership form of business organization in india is governed by the indian partnership act 1932 which defines partnership as the relationship between persons who have agreed to share the profits of the business carried on by all or any of them acting for all Let's understand what are the features or characteristics of partnership form of business organization. Friends, to form a partnership firm, at least two persons are required. The maximum limit on the number of persons is ten for banking business and twenty for other businesses. 
if the number exceeds the above mentioned limit then the partnership becomes illegal and the relationship among them cannot be called partnership friends partnership is created by an agreement among the persons who have agreed to join hands such persons may be competent to contract thus minors lunatics and insolvent persons are not eligible to become the partners in addition there must be always an agreement among the partners to share the profits and losses of business of the partnership firm because if there is no agreement then tomorrow what would happen you never know and whenever there is a profitability who would take how much share that would be never known so ultimately it's very very important to have agreement in addition if two or more persons share the income of jointly owned property it is not regarded as partnership the business of which the persons have agreed to share the profit must be lawful and any agreement to indulge in smuggling black marketing cannot be called partnership business in the eyes of law friends there must be an agency relationship between the partners every partner is the principal as well as agent of the firm and when a partner deals with other parties he or she acts as an agent of other partners and at the same time he would have to act as acting partner in the firm so in general if you look into the partnership somewhere or the other way you are trying to contribute to the capital and you are trying to do the activities in partnership or in association with some other person who is involved in a business now let's understand types of partners friends we have seen that partners are bringing and contributing to its capital participates in the day to day management of the firm's activities and shares its profits and losses in the agreed ratio in other words all partners are supposed to be active partners however in certain cases there are partners who play a limited role they may contribute capital and such partners cannot be termed as active partners similarly some persons may simply lend their name to the firm and make no contribution to the capital of the firm they are doing nothing just their name is there so such persons are partners only in name thus depending upon the extent of participation and the sharing of profits liability so on and so forth partners are classified into different categories it can be summarized like this based on the extent of participation in the day to day management of the partners can be classified as active partners and sleeping partners that is the partners who actively participate in the day to day operations of the business are known as active partners or working partners on the other hand those partners who do not participate in the day to day activities of the business are known as sleeping partners or dormant partners why because they are not contributing in all the activities such partners simply contribute capital and shares the profit and losses they have nothing to do with the day to day activities of the firm on the other hand based on the sharing of the profits the partners may be classified as nominal partners and partners in profits in fact nominal partners allow the firm to use their name as partner they neither invest any capital nor participate in the day to day operations they are not entitled to share the profits of the firm however they are liable to third parties for all the acts of the firm a person who shares the profit of the business without being liable for the losses is known as partner in profits now this is applicable only to the minors who are admitted 
to the benefits of the firm and their liability is limited to their capital contribution. Thirdly, based on liability, the partners can be classified as limited partners and general partners. The liability of limited partners is limited to the extent of their capital contribution. These type of partners are found in limited partnership firm in some of the European countries, US and so far in India also these type of partnership is found. However, the Limited Liability Partnership Act is very much under consideration of the parliament. The partners having unlimited liability are called as general partners or partners with unlimited liability. So, in case of anything happens, even they require to sell their own personal assets and give up everything. It may be noted that every partner who is not a limited partner is treated as a general partner. Fourthly, on the basis of behavior and conduct. So, basically there are two more types of partner besides the ones that we have discussed. They are called partner by estoppel and partner by holding out. Friends, a person who behaves in the public in such a way as to give an impression that he or she is a partner of the firm is called partner by estoppel. Such partners are not entitled to share the profits of the firm but are fully liable if somebody suffers because of his or hers false representation. Similarly, if a partner or partnership firm declares that a particular person is a partner of their firm and such person does not disclaim it, then he or she is known as partner by holding out. Such partners are not entitled to profits but are fully liable as regards the firm's debts. Now, let's understand the suitability of partnership form of business organization. Friends, we have seen already that persons having different ability, skill or expertise can join hands to form a partnership firm to carry on the business activities like construction, providing legal services, medical services and so on can be successfully run under these form of business organization. It is also considered suitable where capital requirement is of medium size. Thus, businesses like a wholesale trade, professional services, mercantile houses and small manufacturing units can be successfully run by partnership firms. Now, let's understand formation of partnership form of business organization. Different steps are to be taken in order to face and in order to form a partnership firm. Firstly, minimum two members are required to form a partnership. The maximum limit is 10 in banking and 20 in other businesses. Second, select the like-minded persons keeping in view the nature and objectives of the business. Thirdly, there must be an agreement among the partners to carry out the business and shares the profit and losses so that in future no problem arises. This agreement must preferably be in writing and duly signed by all the partners because it becomes legal in that way. So, ultimately what we have tried to see is partnership is again one of the very very important form of organization. So, now let me conclude the session. Friends, in this session we have tried to learn two important forms of business organization. One is a sole proprietorship and other is a partnership form. We have seen that sole proprietorship is a very very important form of organization whereby sole that is a person is trying to establish an enterprise who is trying to come up with an idea, 
who is trying to bring a capital, bearing all the risks, trying to run successfully the enterprise, trying to share the profits, no one with no one and trying to do all the activities by their own. We have also seen the merits and demerits of the sole proprietorship. Also, by looking into the nature and types of business and suitability of the business, we can say that the suitability of the business organization is established. In addition, we have also seen the partnership form of business organization and we have seen that minimum 2 and maximum 20 people are required to have a partnership. The very important point that we have seen is agreement is a most important required in case of partnership. Depending upon the nature of the business, the size of the business, the scale of the business and the suitability of the functionality, business owners decide whether he or she is going for sole proprietorship or partnership form of business organization. The other three forms of the organization we would see in the other session. For this session, if you have any query, you can write on this email ID. I hope you are very clear with the fundamentals of the sole proprietorship.